Throughout my life, I have been obsessed with the question, why is there something rather than nothing? Why is there anything at all? Any laws of physics, anything whatsoever. In fact, well-known philosophers said, if this question doesn't totally drive you nuts, you just don't understand the question. Well, I, as a physicist, try to find meaning ultimately through equations, observations, and then after the observations and equations are done, then we can look back and see where are we going with all this. And what we see is a pattern. We see a pattern that the laws of physics seem so strange and disconnected and nutty, in fact, but they are converging, converging to a harmonious end. So the trend of unification, the trend of harmony, is something we see throughout this whole process. Then you ask the question, well, what's beyond that? Is there an equation like E equals MC squared that will give us the whole shooting match? And I tend to believe the answer is yes, that there is an equation, perhaps no more than half an inch long, which will give us the entire theory of creation itself. You realize that on a sheet of paper this big, we can already write down all the known laws of physics, extending from the heart of an atom all the way out to the nature of the Big Bang and the galaxies themselves. Then the question is, well, where did that sheet of paper come from? <laughs> where did that one equation come from? Right. When Einstein would work, he would say to himself in the morning, and he wrote about this in his memoirs, if I'm God today, how would I create a universe? What would I start with? What principles would I need? And you can say to yourself, well, first I need an arena. First, I need a place where things to happen. Then I need stuff to make things happen. So when you start with an arena, immediately you're led to an idea that the minimal universe you can create is a universe with some kind of space and time for stuff to happen. And then you have to have stuff happening. But it didn't have to be this bizarre quantum theory, but it does have to be this bizarre quantum theory. You see, the simplest stuff that you could have is Newtonian things going around other things, Earth going around stars. That's the simplest stuff you can have, but it's unstable. If I have two solar systems collide, what happens? I get mush. If I have solar systems bumping into each other, I have planets being flung out, stars colliding with stars, it's a mess. So therefore, atoms made out of gravity are not stable. Therefore, you have to have a glue that can hold stuff together. Things have to be at more places at the same time in order to make two things stick. That's where the quantum theory comes in. So you, you have both of these uh, uh, major ways of thinking. You have the arena, space and time in, in which things happen. And then you have the kinds of laws which create the matter, the stuff, or the events to happen within that arena. And that all coherently makes sense. But the question pushes us back one step further. Where did those laws come from? How do you get them now so beautifully that work together? The answer, I think, is mathematical self-consistency. When you start to create a theory of an arena and a theory of stuff that sticks together, almost immediately you find that mathematics is unstable. Things fall apart. Things don't stick together. Newtonian atoms don't stick together. When you start to put in consistency, mathematical consistency, then you realize it could be unique. There could be only one theory where stuff sticks together and is stable and exists in an arena. So in some sense, God is a mathematician. God is a geometer creating only universes which are mathematically self-consistent. And once you have an arena, and once you have stuff that's stable, it could be unique. There could be only one theory of stuff in an arena. When you're using the term God, you're using the term in, in Einstein's sense, in the, in, the, in the sense of underlying principles of the universe, as opposed to a religious sense of a personal God, I assume. That's right. The God of Spinoza is what Einstein believed in. He called him the old man. That is, the law giver that existed in some sense before the universe was created. Yeah, the old one or something like the that. The old one, yeah. right, he said. And, and, and the old one was not a, a person as much as this ubiquitous principle of, of harmony, of order, of consistency. Right, and so mathematical consistency is so stringent, so stringent, that Einstein said maybe God didn't have a choice. 
He asked himself the key question, did God have a choice in making the universe? And he realized that maybe the universe was unique. It had to be the way it is because there's no other possibility.